Hello, everyone. Uh, since APC's youth mission is scheduled from October 30th to November 1st, uh, you know, so we've been asked to record uh, lectures for the classes that are originally scheduled on those days. So kindly listen to the two class lectures uh, for October 31st. Uh, and if you have any questions about uh, uh, the content that has been shared or taught during these two class lectures, uh, in-person students and online students, uh, please feel free to post them in the Google Classroom and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, the e-learning students, uh, please use the discussion page uh, uh, to ask your questions, okay? And if you still uh, feel that your questions are unanswered uh, or not, uh, you did not get an uh, adequate response, you're still uh, unclear or unsure of what was, uh, um, uh, you know, answered in the questions that you said, you can um, uh, ask me when we meet in the following uh, week, okay? Uh, so we were uh, looking at... Um, Oh, we were studying chapter 13 um, in Receiving God's Guidance. Uh, we were studying the final method or way that uh, we can consider, uh, you know, through which God uh, uh, guides us and leads us or through which we can receive God's guidance. And uh, uh, that is by recognizing, you know, what God is orchestrating uh, in our lives, the circumstances, uh, circumstances and the life situations that he is orchestrating in our lives uh, through which he guides us. Now, we have looked at uh, uh, nine methods. Uh, one method, I said, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you will be learning in uh, the Holy Spirit class, so I did not do that chapter. But we looked at um, uh, the nine different ways that we can consider how we can receive God's guidance. And the 11th one is, uh, you know, recognizing uh, the circumstances and the situations that God orchestrates in our life. So we began looking uh, a little bit about this um, in the last class, and we'll continue. Uh, so I said, or I ended last class by saying that, you know, uh, while we need to be aware or recognize uh, the circumstances, circumstances and the situations uh, that God orchestrates in our lives, uh, yet we need to also, uh, you know, uh, uh, be vigilant and also understand that not uh, everything that comes our way is from God. Okay, and we must discern and act with wisdom. We need to know uh, what is orchestrated by God, what situations, circumstances are orchestrated by God, and, uh, you know, accept what comes from God, and also confront and overcome what is uh, of the enemy and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the carnal nature, uh, the, the, the flesh that cries out from within us, uh, seeking attention, and also uh, what the world uh, is crying out or asking us to uh, do. So we need to confront and overcome what is of the enemy, what is of the carnal nature, the flesh and of the uh, world. Now, um, there are some times, you know, we uh, want to understand uh, uh, what, uh, you know, how God is leading us and guiding us. And so, you know, we could, uh, you know, cast lots so we can, you know, put a fleece before God, uh, like, uh, you know, Gideon did in the in the Old Testament. And so the question is, should we do that as uh, new covenant believers? So we look at that and then we'll answer whether we should do what, you know, uh, uh, the uh, the people in the Old Testament did and what some of the, uh, you know, uh, the early uh, believers did even before uh, uh, the Pentecost or they were baptized in the Holy um, Spirit. And should we follow those methods to receive God's guidance in our um, lives? Okay. We read in Judges chapter 6, uh, verses 36 to 40, that God called uh, uh, Gideon uh, to save the Israelites, uh, you know, from the enemies. And uh, so Gideon wanted to know if um, this calling was truly from the Lord, if he heard right, and if God was leading him, guiding him to lead uh, uh, the army of Israel to fight against their enemies. So he puts a fleece. Um, 
of wool. He puts a fleece of wool on the threshing floor and he tells God that, you know, the next morning when there is dew, uh, when the dew falls, the dew should fall only on the fleece and the rest of the ground around it should be dry. So the next morning when he wakes up, he sees that the fleece is wet uh, uh, and the ground around it is absolutely uh, dry. And now he wants, uh, you know, a, a, a second assurance. So he uh, tells God, God, the next day, the next morning, uh, you know, cause the fleece to be dry and the ground around it to be uh, wet. And it exactly happens as uh, Gideon asked. So it was a confirmation for Gideon that God was calling him to be the deliverer for uh, Israel. And, you know, God accommodated him uh, uh, with this request and led him uh, through that, uh, yes, God can do this again, but you know, uh, we strongly urge believers not to try putting out a fleece. Uh, Gideon had no choice in his time, uh, but uh, in uh, our time today, you know, uh, we have God's word in our hand. In the Old Testament, uh, you know, they did not have the Torah. It was, uh, uh, you know, in the hands of only few people, the rabbis, uh, the scribes uh, who had access to it. But now we all have access to God's word. God's word leads us and guides us. Um, and also we have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Spirit uh, is, uh, you know, uh, given to every believer in the new covenant and the Holy Spirit uh, lives in us and he guides us and he teaches us and he um, leads us. Okay. So for the New Testament believers, God has called us to be instructed by his word and also learn to listen and to be led by the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay. Um, so you know, be careful. Um, don't try to put out fleas. Otherwise, you know, you can uh, judge things that are uh, or perceive things and understand things in the wrong way and do things the wrong way, which can uh, bring a lot of disappointment and misery and frustration. Uh, now, some uh, believers say that, you know, uh, or cast lots, they cast lots and they try to find out God's will. They said, hey, this is biblical. This is what, uh, uh, you know, uh, people in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, you know, if you read from Acts chapter 1 verses 24 to 26, we see that, uh, you know, the 11 apostles um, wanted to choose another apostle to make it 12 because Judas was no longer, uh, you know, an apostle. And so they cast lots and the lot fell on uh, uh, Matthias okay uh, or Matthias and um, but we see that you know this happened uh, uh, this casting of lots was done before the day of Pentecost and we need to keep that in mind and the apostles were not yet familiar with the work and the activity of the Holy Spirit and so we see later on in the book of Acts when uh, the, uh, the apostles or the disciples or the early believers had to make any uh, decisions. They did not cast any lots like they did in Acts chapter 1, but they relied on the leading of the Holy uh, uh, Spirit. Uh, just to give you two examples, in Acts chapter 13, oh, we see that, uh, you know, while a few uh, believers were fasting and praying, uh, the Lord spoke to each one of them and said, now separate for me, uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, uh, chapter 13 was 2 of the book of Acts. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for work to which I have called them. Okay. And so we see that they do not cast any lots, but this decision was clearly made on the basis of what the Holy Spirit asked them to do and let them to uh, do. Another instance that we can read is in Acts chapter 15, verse uh, 28. Um, we see that, you know, uh, the first council at Jerusalem, when Paul, Barnabas, and some of the believers from Antioch went to uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, to discuss whether the Gentiles should follow uh, the Jewish customs of, uh, and one of them was being circumcised. Uh, we see that, you know, uh, they made a decision not by putting fleas, not by casting lots, or not by taking votes, but, you know, they depended on the scripture and the leading of the Holy uh, spirit. Okay. So it, uh, uh, we read uh, in verse 28 of Acts chapter 15 that it seemed good 
uh, the the believers made this decision and they all said you know it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us to lay upon you that is you is the gentiles no greater burden than these necessary things so how did they make um, um, a decision unanimously that you know uh, though it was a very very strategic and important decision uh, you know the jews wanted the gentiles to also follow jewish customs but uh, you know uh, how did they all come around is because the holy spirit spoke to them and said it seemed good to the holy spirit the holy spirit revealed to everyone in that council at uh, jerusalem so um you know, even as we make decisions in life, it's important that we depend on the word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And also we looked at, that is a primary way. We also looked at secondary ways in which the Holy Spirit leads us. We looked at, you know, prophecy, godly counsel, angels, you know, looking at understanding and discerning the times and seasons, you know, and and uh, the, you know the uh, uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit and all of those uh, other you know the gifts of the Holy Spirit and all of the other methods that we had looked at the secondary ways uh, in which we can also uh, understand God's leading and guidance in our um, lives. Now we will look at uh, some things to keep in mind, some facts to keep in mind or to consider. You know, uh, uh, you know. Uh, uh, as you look at life situations and circumstances. So some facts to keep in mind as you consider life circumstances and situations to understand God's direction for your um, life. So uh, when God orchestrates things in our lives, when he does things in our lives, uh, uh, some facts to keep in mind even as uh, uh, we try to understand what God is speaking to us or directing us uh, through those circumstances and situations that he is orchestrating in our lives. The first one is not every closed door is a no. Now, sometimes when we face closed doors, when we're pursuing God's plan and purpose for our lives, we think that those closed doors are something that, you know, uh, is what God does not want us to enter in. Uh, it could be, but there's sometimes when those closed doors are there, you know, which we are supposed to knock and, uh, you know, keep on knocking uh, till the door is open like we read in Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 and 8 ask and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open to you for everyone who asks receives and him who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened so you know, sometimes we need to press in, keep knocking, keep declaring God's word, his promises till we see that door uh, opened. Okay. Now, sometimes when there are closed doors, it is simply God redirecting us, uh, you know, um, to the right or the correct door. So it might be not the right opportunity or the situation or the person that we need to connect with. God is correcting you and leading you to uh, the right person or the right uh, opportunity or the right uh, place that you have to be in. Now, we need to understand that the closed door does not mean that the purpose you are pursuing or the vision for God's uh, vision of God for your life, what you are pursuing is not for you. No, it's not true. Uh, it can just mean that God is redirecting you or correcting you to the right uh, or, or, or leading you to the right door or, you know, you just have to press in and uh, knock and also need to understand that, you know, it doesn't mean that the purpose and the vision that you are pursuing Doing what God has called you to do is not for uh, you. Let's look at an example. Uh, when Joseph and Mary came to Bethlehem, you know, um, there was uh, uh, Mary was, uh, you know, uh, f uh, pregnant, almost going to give birth to the Son of God. And we see there was not a single room for them in the uh, inn. Now, the absence of a room, you know, in, a, in an inn did not anyway deny the fact that what she was carrying was the very Son of God, which was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we know that Jesus was born in a place where animals were kept, um, and he was uh, placed in an animal feeding trough. Uh, but none of this 
you know, diminish the significance of who he is and the impact that he would make on the human uh, race. So we need to just remember that closed doors does not always mean no. We need to discern what God is uh, telling us, what he wants from us and what he's asking us to uh, pursue. Okay. The other fact that we can um, uh, 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 we need to keep in mind as we consider you know life situations and circumstances to understand God's direction for our life is that not every delay is a, a denial. Now, sometimes, you know, we can expect something to happen in a particular time frame um, and we tend to give up or quit if things don't happen in that time frame in which we have envisioned or which we have thought. And uh, we interpret uh, delays as denials. And, you know, this is not right or this is not so uh, because we know, like we learned in the previous chapter, that, you know, God, of, of you know, unfolds or brings about uh, the purpose, the vision. He gives birth to the purpose and the vision and the plan uh, that he has for our lives at the appointed time, at the Kairos time, the fullness of time, the God appointed uh, time. So even if there are delays, that means, you know, uh, it, God, it's the chronological time. God is preparing us. He's teaching us. You know, he's correcting our heart attitudes, um, our character. He's molding us to be more like him and he is um, equipping us with the skills that we need uh, you know uh, uh, to fulfill uh, the plan and the purpose that he has for our uh, life so not every delay is a denial and we need to be patient endure uh, through the chronological time and at the kairos moment god will open uh, uh, you know the uh, 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 the doors and he will lead us to do what he has purpose and plan for us an example that we can look at is uh, you know joseph you know think about joseph you know as a teenager he had been given dreams of what god would do to his life and then as time passed we see that you know things got really worse for him he was sold off as a slave uh, in egypt he was uh, you know uh, uh, falsely accused by potiphar's wife then he was thrown in prison uh, but all of this did not mean that God's purpose for his life would never be uh, fulfilled no we see God orchestrating things working out things uh, you know uh, even when he was in prison we see that um, you know he interpreted the dreams and uh, he was finally released uh, from prison and you know uh, uh, and things suddenly began to uh, change for him and he began to see God's plan and purposes just unfolding right before his um, eyes. And so we see that even though, you know, uh, he went through difficult circumstances and situations, you know, which he did not even envision and think would happen in his life. Um, and, you know, almost, I think, uh, 11 years uh, he uh, spent um, from the time that, uh, you know, he was in Egypt to the time that he was made the prime minister um, of, um, uh, you know, uh, of Egypt, uh, 11 years of struggle, uh, you know, uh, 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 did it mean that, you know, that uh, God's purpose for his life will never be fulfilled? No. Uh, we see all along God was, uh, you know, testing him, you know, uh, preparing uh, uh, Joseph, getting him ready for his life um, assignment. Okay. So as we are considering our circumstances and situations, we must be careful not to interpret God's delays or delays in our life as denials. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, is, you know, don't accept every closed door as no. Some doors must be pushed open. You know, uh, it can be a hindrance from the enemy. So speak God's word, speak God's promises, press in, you know, uh, take what is yours, what is rightfully yours. Uh, don't accept every delay as denials. Sometimes we need to stand through time with patience, endure things. And, you know, um, also when you go through 
you know, this, these times that I have mentioned, you know, don't read too much into everything that happens. Uh, you know, don't become too weird or spooky. Don't become superstitious or irrational. You know, just need to discern what God is orchestrating. Ask God, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, and recognize when God is at work and accept uh, that as his way of guiding you into his purposes and walk into what he is orchestrating for uh, you. Okay. Um, so there are a few examples in the, in the publication that the uh, pastor has mentioned about, uh, you know, how God orchestrated uh, circumstances and divine, uh, you know, favors and divine uh, uh, situations, you know, uh, for APC uh, and how he opened uh, doors for us to start uh, various, uh, you know, ministries and, uh, you know, extend the ministry at APC. And you can read that, uh, which is at the end of chapter um, 13. Okay, we'll move on to chapter 14. Um, so chapter 14, we'll just put everything uh, what we have studied so far together. Uh, and we will see what we can learn a few more things uh, before, you know, uh, uh, we finish studying this book, receiving God's guidance or understanding how God's uh, how God guides us and leads us in his life in our life, sorry, to fulfill his plan and his uh, purpose. So we have looked at 10 ways uh, through which we can receive God's guidance and direction in our lives. Uh, of course, there are 11, but we did not study the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as I already mentioned. Now, you know, we are not saying that these are the 11 ways that God will guide us. Uh, we're not limiting or restricting God to speak his guidance to us in just these ways, uh, you know, but we need to just be accustomed uh, to how God uh, can speak and, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 lead and guide us. Uh, and there can also be, you know, other ways, fresh new ways that he can lead and guide us. Uh, we just need to be open uh, to what God is doing and leading and guiding us in our uh, lives. Okay. But we need to understand that the first three that we uh, studied, the first three ways God guides us uh, is uh, the word, the inner witness, the Holy Spirit, and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Uh, these are primary ways which we receive God's guidance. Okay. So the primary way uh, is the word of God, scripture, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, and the voice of the Holy uh, Spirit. And why do we refer or call these as a primary way? Uh, is because they are reliable. We can, you know, just go with what, you know, we are reading from God's word and what we hear the, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, speaking to us through his voice or through the inner witness uh, in our spirit, uh, man. Now, the other eight ways are called the secondary ways that is you know uh, dreams and visions gifts of the holy spirit prophecies angels godly counsel renewed mind times and seasons circumstances and divine orchestration you know uh, these are secondary ways why do we call the secondary because they need to be verified uh, validated and uh, you know tested and how do we test that we test it to the word of god and to the inner witness of the holy um, spirit okay and how do we uh, validate or test uh, it we need to ask ourselves these two simple questions is what i feel uh, led to do aligned uh, or in harmony with the word of god now if there are uh, no specific scripture uh, passages or verses uh, related to the matter that you are trying to check or pursue uh, then you know you must uh, depend or uh, align what you're feeling or thinking uh, according to the nature and the character of god you need to see or check if what you feel or led to do is aligned to the nature and the character of god and the second, uh, you know, simple question you need to ask yourself is what is the Holy Spirit speaking or witnessing in my uh, spirit about this? Um, you know, uh, so you need to ask yourself, do I sense his peace and his approval on this matter? If you don't sense his peace, if you don't sense his approval, you know, uh, then don't go ahead and uh, do it. Okay. Now, uh, uh, 
you know, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1, Paul is quoting from uh, the Old Testament, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15, where he says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. So, you know, we need to ensure that there are at least two or three witnesses confirming the guidance we have uh, received, okay? So, for example, if you, uh, you know, you're making a decision based on a, a, a specific instruction from the word of God, you can step out and do it with confidence because, you know, um, that is the primary way and you don't have to validate it with anything else, you know, um, um, you know, um, but considering situations where you receive a prophecy, you know, or a, God, a counsel, a godly counsel from someone, you know, it's good to validate that uh, with the word of God, with uh, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Holy uh, Spirit. And I've already explained that to us. Okay. And once you are assured that this is what God wants you to do, then what you need to do is then seek God's timing. What is God's timing to act on it? I already gave you an example uh, last class about, uh, you know, about somebody going and, you know, receiving a prophecy that they're going to start a, a restaurant, you know, and, you know, what um, should be done, what shouldn't be done. So it's important to seek God's timing. And also when you are, uh, you know, waiting on God for the Kairos moment, for his plan, purpose and vision to be fulfilled in your life, you need to also, you know, uh, get uh, into the process of God preparing you, uh, you know, uh, 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 to fulfill his plan and purpose at the Kairos moment, okay? And um, so, you know, begin the preparation process and, you um, uh, seize the opportunities that God is orchestrating in your life, the situations that he's bringing about your life, uh, seize those opportunities that he's bringing your uh, way. So these are some of the things that you need to uh, do. But we need to remember that even as, you know, we, um, you know, listen to God, you know, seek his timing, uh, go through the preparation process, you know, uh, seize the opportunities that he's orchestrating, the situations that he's orchestrating in our lives. You know, uh, we can also make mistakes, but we need to learn from our uh, mistakes because every mistake that we make, you know, uh, is an opportunity to learn. And we need to remember that we are not perfect. We uh, uh, can make mistakes, but every mistake that we make uh, is a good opportunity for us to um, learn. And it's also important that, you know, we learn to discern uh, God's voice. Okay. Like God, uh, uh, Jesus says in John chapter 10, you know, uh, uh, the sheep, uh, he's talking about the sheep and the shepherd, uh, you know, it says in verse 4 that when the, sh uh, the shepherd brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. They're listening to his voice. And verse 5 says, yet they will not by any means follow a stranger but they will flee from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. And in verse 27, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they uh, follow me. So it's important uh, while it is uh, challenging, uh, you know, uh, to discern the voice of our shepherd. Uh, it is important to, uh, you know, try to uh, uh, discern the voice of the uh, shepherd, but it can be challenging because sometimes, you know, um, we can misunderstand the voice of the shepherd for our the voice of our own souls, which is our own uh, carnal nature self, that our desires of our uh, flesh, our emotions that are crying out, you know, or the voice of the world and the voice of the stranger, which is the uh, devil. We need to differentiate all of these voices from the voice of our uh, shepherd who is Christ Jesus, our Lord. And sometimes, you know, um, the stranger who is the devil, you know, his voice can sound as close to the voice of the Lord himself and can, you know, uh, trick us and cheat us and divert us. Uh, so God's sheep must learn to know his voice and distinguish from the voice of the enemy, the voice of ourself and the voice of the uh, world, okay? And when we know his voice, you know, we will also hear his voice and we can uh, follow him. Now, 
this uh, process of understanding or knowing or discerning the voice of the shepherd is a learning process, uh, you know, um, and the more you are uh, tuned in every day to listen, to engage, to fellowship with God, uh, you know, uh, to uh, keep uh, uh, speaking to him, interacting with him, asking him uh, for the, you know, what choice to make, what to say, what step to take, what to speak, uh, you know, uh, will help you to, uh, you know, uh, come to a place where you are able to very clearly discern the voice of the shepherd. And also, you know, the more you are intimate with God, reading his word, his word is filling your heart and mind, you will be able to discern the voice of the uh, shepherd. Okay. And you will come to a place where you know with surety and assurance, yes, this is God speaking, or this is my flesh or my own self that is crying out, this is a voice of the world, and this, or this is a voice of the enemy, because, you know, God's word trains us in righteousness and holiness. God's word trains us to discern uh, what God is telling us and the things of this world and the things of the self and uh, devil himself. So, um, even as we make uh, mistakes, we must remember that, you know, God is with us. He will restore us. You know, he can get us back on track. Uh, you know, often our enemy attacks us on our blind side, uh, which, you know, uh, we cannot see our own mistakes. And that is why we need each other. We need to look out to each other so that we can help each other and stay on track. And that is why it's important to receive godly counsel. That's why it's important to have, be accountable to people in your lives. That's why it's important to be part of a, 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 a group, a fellowship group, or people who are godly so that they can correct you, they can help you to see the uh, you know the mistakes that you are not able to see because you know and the enemy attacks us on our blind side and uh, you know um, uh, they can help us to stay on track and uh, even as uh, uh, you know they uh, god sends people our way and you know makes us aware of our mistakes we must acknowledge our mistakes and get back on the course Okay, uh, now there is an interesting passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 30, where uh, God through his prophet is rebuking the people of Israel, telling them that, you know, they looked for to Egypt for help, rather than, you know, uh, trusting in him rather than looking up to him. And, you know, uh, in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 9, God says, you know, you have rejected my laws. Uh, you know, uh, in verse 11, he said, you have rejected the prophets and the seers whom God sent to correct them, to, uh, you know, to train them in righteousness and holiness. And yet to such rebellious people, God says that he will wait for them to return to him. What an amazing and loving God he is, right? He's saying that even if you've gone away, you know, I'm waiting for you to return back uh, to me. And when he's, when they return back, God promises them in the same chapter, Isaiah 30, verses 20 and 21, that he would teach them and their ears will hear a word behind them saying, this is the way walk ye in it. And wherever you turn to the right hand or whether you turn to the left, they will hear a voice saying, this is the way now, uh, you know, uh, walk in it. So uh, in this verses 20 and 21, uh, the word teachers or teacher is translated or is referring uh, to, you know, God himself, who is the teacher, who teaches people and is promising them that, you know, even uh, during their rebellion, uh, God's corrective dealing with them, he will you know they will be able to hear and receive his guidance on the right way to uh, walk. When God is willing to do that for the Israelites, then how much more uh, should we be able uh, to hear his voice uh, teaching us, now this is the way, now walk in it, you know? How much more as new covenant believers can we have this privilege, uh, but we can have this privilege when we are earnestly seeking for his uh, guidance, okay? Now, yes, we make mistakes in our lives, but it's important that we get back on course, you know, um, um, 
because you know uh, you know god uh, will guide continue to guide us and uh, uh, lead us okay uh, the psalmist in psalm 18 verse 36 says you enlarge my path under me so my feet did not slip okay so it's uh, it's possible to walk with god in such a manner where we can experience god you know clearing the path every step we take uh, so that when we walk we don't uh, stumble okay um, now david who spoke these words uh, you know uh, was able to say this because he was somebody you know who inquired of god constantly he was somebody who honored god in his choices and he walked with uh, wisdom but even though you know he was somebody who inquired of God constantly, honored God, and walked in wisdom, we know that he made mistakes uh, 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 through the wrong choices, uh, the selfish desires, and he went through uh, uh, or he experienced uh, trouble. Okay, and so let's look at what David says in Psalm chapter twenty-five. You know, uh, verse four and verse fifteen. Uh, we see David uh, prayed uh, to God to teach him and guide him and uh, uh, he also affirmed that when you know david found his feet trapped in the net you know or uh, in a difficult situation you know uh, david says that he would keep his eyes on the lord knowing that god would bring him uh, out okay so that is what he says in psalm 25 verse 4 and 15 uh, verses uh, 4 and verse 15 now, in Psalm 37, uh, in verse 23 and 24, uh, we see, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 David saying, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Okay, so like we said, when we journey through life, we will make mistakes. Uh, we are still learning, you know, how to... Um, uh, overcome uh, the the cry and the uh, you know uh, the desires of our uh, uh, carnal nature. How to crucify our fleshly desires? How to resist the temptation of the, of the enemy? We're learning how to listen to God uh, and receive His guidance in our life. Uh, so like david like the others along the way we can make wrong choices we can make wrong decisions but you know uh, uh, in and through all of those uh, situations and circumstances we need to keep our eyes fixed on the lord because he is greater than our uh, mistakes okay um, and he is bigger than the mess that we have created for ourselves and he will uh, still work out his plans and purposes uh, when we repent, when we go back to him, uh, when we submit and surrender our lives to him. You know, he will um, realign our will, our um, hearts to him, and he will work in and through um, us. And we know that uh, no plan of God can be defeated. And we also know that God is a God who restores a God who refreshes, he's a God who restores time and he restores all, he will restore all the, you know, the, the, the years, the months uh, that have been wasted away. And we also know that he is our great redeemer who can redeem things for uh, us. Okay. Um, uh, so when we make mistakes, go back to God and, you know, uh, just repent, ask him for forgiveness and he will restore us and redeem uh, things in our life and he would also uh, get us to fulfill his uh, divine plan and purpose for our uh, lives okay now we will just uh, uh, look at a few practical uh, instructions the rest of this chapter we look at a few practical instructions for us so that we can order and live our lives in such a way that we can receive his guidance correctly and um, accurately okay uh, so the uh, one practical instruction uh, uh, for us so that we can order our lives uh, is that we need to stay on the side of caution um, and also remember when to stay on the uh, uh, side of caution and also to know when to take uh, risks in uh, faith. Okay. Uh, 
Romans chapter 11, verses 33 and 34 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Now, the wisdom, uh, knowledge, uh, decisions, and ways of God are way beyond our understanding, our comprehension, and we are constantly learning and, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, more and more uh, of his wisdom and knowledge and decision and ways in our lives uh, because God is infinite and, you know, we are trying to understand him with our finite minds, um, and what we understand of him is a, a very limited, small uh, understanding of his ways and his wisdom. Uh, but God can and will guide us and lead us in unusual ways, in ways that we have never imagined. Uh, but for us to, you know, uh, be led by God, uh, we must stay open, receptive and be obedient to his leading and uh, guiding. Okay. Uh, so there will be times when, you know, um, God would uh, ask us to just step out into the unknown. He has spoken to us. He's asked us to do something. It is an unknown thing. We don't know anything, uh, but we know for sure that he has spoken to us and we just step out in faith, uh, knowing that he has guided us. He's spoken to us, uh, not knowing how to go about doing things or where we are going. For example, you know, uh, Abraham when God asked him to step out, um, uh, you know, God spoke to him, God asked him to step out, uh, and he stepped out knowing that God has spoken to him, but he did not know where he was uh, going, okay? And, uh, you know, at those times in our lives when we are just, uh, you know, God asks us to do something like that, we just take the risk by faith, uh, we just take the first step, and, you know, uh, we know that, you know, uh, the next step, God will lead us. He will lead us step by step, moment by uh, moment. Okay. Um, and there are times, you know, when we have to uh, make certain decisions, take uh, certain steps, uh, when we have to stay on the side of caution. Okay. Uh, we only step out when we know we have sufficient details and we are sure what God is guiding and leading us to um, do okay so even as we uh, uh, journey through life the beautiful thing is that we can make decisions and step out with god uh, you know uh, just in faith and he will make things clearer and brighter um, and you know uh, we will discover that with his help the decisions that we have made were right and he's continuing to lead us and guide us as his sons and uh, daughters okay and uh, he will make things clearer and brighter like uh, we read in proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. So when, you know, early in the morning when, you know, the sun rises, say around 4, 4.30, we don't, there's not brightness everywhere. There's just a small, you know, glimmer of light. But then as the sun keeps coming up, you know, things become more brighter and clearer. And at noonday, noon everything is just bright and very, very uh, clear. Okay. So I'll just give, uh, uh, like to give you an example. Uh, for, I've already shared this example of my own life, you know, when um, uh, God told me to uh, go into full-time ministry, you know, I was not willing the first time, but when, uh, you know, he orchestrated circum circumstances and situations in my life that didn't fall in place and I asked God, God, what are you doing in my life? He told me, you know, I want you to go into uh, a full-time ministry. I uh, want to go to Bi I want you to go to Bible college. He did not tell me where, you know, how to go, uh, how many years to study, how he's going to provide. But I just received that word, you know, full time ministry. I wanted to be in full time ministry and go to Bible college. That's it. You know, um, I just stepped out in of faith. I uh, I also told you, you know, when um, uh, uh, when God called me to. Put send in my resume to all people's church, you know, uh, 
things didn't fit in, things didn't seem, uh, you know, I didn't fit in in any of the positions that were available there, but I just stepped out in uh, faith, okay? So um, there are times when we also need to be cautious, like the example I gave about, you know, somebody gives you a prophecy saying that, hey, you're going to start a business, a restaurant, you don't know, just jump at it, you know, or uh, God tells you, I want you to, uh, you know, uh, start, a, uh, you will lead, you'll be a pastor of a church, uh, and the church will rise up to 5000 members, you just don't stop studying in Bible college, you know, uh, and just uh, go and start a church. But you wait, you ask God and, you know, uh, you know, ask him to prepare you, uh, build your knowledge, your skills on how to start a church, how to run a church. Maybe you'll have to work with some other pastor of a good church who's been leading a church for many years, learn from him, you know, and do all of those things. Ask God where you need to go and plant a church, you know, uh, raise up the finances, you know, see what you can do, uh, equip yourself. So at those times, you know, we stay on the side of caution. Or we don't just step out uh, till we have sufficient details and we're sure that it is God is guiding us and uh, leading us. Okay. Uh, the other thing that, um, you know, uh, practical instruction for us is even as we order our lives uh, to receive God's guidance correctly and accurately is staying with the last instruction. Now, there are seasons in our life you know, uh, when everything is going well in the place that we are, you know, we're doing what God has called us to do. And then we uh, realize, hey, God is not speaking anything new to me. You know, um, uh, there's no change. Uh, God is not asking me to do uh, anything differently or step into anything that is different and it seems like you've been put on hold or you're not hearing anything new or different and at those times you just stay with the last instruction you keep doing what God has told you to do do it faithfully consistently with excellence and for his glory uh, and uh, continue to grow and increase and expand uh, you know uh, uh, and move into new levels what God has uh, already given to you what you are doing what he has assigned you to uh, do uh, Paul is writing in first Corinthians chapter 4 and uh Verse 2, he says, you know, we need to be uh, good stewards and good steward is one who is found faithful. So even as God has entrusted things to us, what he expects of us is that he wants us to be good stewards, that we remain faithful faithful to uh, 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 to be faithful means to be trustworthy, dependable, someone who can be counted on okay uh, so stay faithful with what god has assigned to you keep growing in it until he tells you to do something new or uh, different another thing that uh, you know we can um, uh, keep in mind uh, you know is um, sorry yeah so another practical instruction for us is that you know um Avoid being self-driven and stubborn, okay? Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but, it, uh, but its end is the way of death. So one of our biggest challenges to receiving God's guidance and direction in our lives is that we are pursuing things that are motivated out of self or is driven by uh, self, okay? Now, sometimes the... What we are doing may be good, noble. However, why we are doing it, the motives, the agenda behind it, is be uh, can be impure and because of self. Uh, you know, it's because it uh, it gratifies our self uh, uh, selfish desires. It uh, uh, it makes us look as good, important, uh, skilled. You know, uh, whatever. But you know. Um, it's important that we pursue things that are motivated by God and not motivated or driven by uh, self. So we, um, when we focus, when we get focused to do something, uh, you know, to satisfy our selfish interests, uh, 
you know, that we are unable to listen to what God is speaking uh, to us, then it can become uh, very, very difficult for us to realign our ways and our purposes to God's purposes. And we can live a life uh, that is a lie because we think what we are doing is what God has called us to do, what God has ordained us to uh, do. So, you know, we can come to a place where we can think what we're doing is uh, seems right to us. But, you know, if it is motivated by self, the outcome is not going to be pleasant, uh, you know, and it's not going to transform lives. It's not going to bear fruit. It's not going to uh, be something that you are going to be enjoying, uh, bringing you joy and peace. And also it's not something that is God glorifying because it's glorifying the uh, self. Okay. Um, and closely connected to being self-driven is being stubborn. Uh, when we are stubborn, we have this, uh, we have an attitude that insists on having our own way uh, and, you know, no other way. And so we can even go away from God. Uh, and uh, stubbornness is a wrong heart attitude. And stubbornness is often birthed out of spiritual uh, pride. Okay. Uh, and at, when we are stubborn, we also will be unwilling to listen to others, you know, he, learn from others, even listen to what God is speaking to us through his word, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. We'll be unwilling to receive godly counsel. We will not be uh, teachable. And, you know, we will claim superiority, uh, you know, uh, uh, in uh, uh, even superiority of revelations that we will think that we are receiving from God or even superiority in spiritual um, experiences. So it's important that, you know, uh, we check ourselves to know whether, you know, what we are doing is driven by self or it's uh, led by God. And how do we know that? Whether, again, going back to the primary ways also see that, you know, uh, if it's aligned to what God is speaking to you, guiding you, if it is glorifying God, uh, if it is uh, 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 according to his nature, or if it is just pleasing your emotions and your desires and what your carnal nature is crying out or the flesh is crying out to. Now we see that, uh, <clears throat> sorry. Moses, you know, points out that stubbornness um, is in a heart issue. Uh, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16, uh, stop being stubborn, give your hearts to God. Okay. So uh, stubbornness is a heart uh, issue. And, you know, it is something that will delay the Kairos moment in our lives. It will also take away, take us away from God's plan and purpose. So um, we need to come to a place of surrender, of yielding our hearts to God and giving him, uh, you know, the rightful place over our desires, our dreams, our plans, our pursuits, uh, making him the Lord of our hearts, our, uh, our very beings and saying, God, this is my will and my plan, but you're willing to, you are, uh, you know, you are free to just change it and do what you want. And I'm here to do what you're calling me to uh, do. And when we do that, we'll be in a better place to receive God's guidance for our lives. Uh, you know, and uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> we'll be in a better place to receive God's guidance for our lives uh, and, uh, because we are living a life that is uh, submitted and surrendered to uh, God. Look at what Psalm 25 verse 9 says. He says, the humble he guides in justice and the humble he teaches his way. So if you're saying that, hey, I'm not uh, receiving any guidance from God. God is not teaching me. He's not leading me. Uh, you know, I'm not hearing from God. It's maybe you're not come to that place where you are fully submitted and surrendered in total obedience to God because God says, you know, the humble he teaches his uh, way. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We'll take a break and we'll come back and continue. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat>